Bonjour les amis, bienvenue à Paris. I am sitting in a cemetery this morning as I wait for my train to depart from nearby Gare Montparnasse. Le cimetière de Montparnasse, the Montparnasse Cemetery, is a favorite in Paris. You know we have several big cemeteries. This is the second largest and it was inaugurated roughly 20 years after the famous one, the Père Lachaise. There are about 47, 50 acres here in uh, two main sections and um, about 30,000 graves, I would think. I thought it'd be interesting to do this today uh, because today is November 5th. And as you probably know, the French do honor their dead on November 2nd. The atmosphere is just right. It's fall and it's very foggy this morning. And everywhere I look, I see the colorful blooms of chrysanthème, mums. Those flowers that the French love to bring on November 2nd, especially to honor their beloved ones. I'm going to take you on a short stroll today in the cemetery and <clears throat> show you some of my favorite people here. I'm sorry, my voice, as you can tell, it is the morning. I thought it'd be nice to try and think of why we come to cemeteries like this one, the Cimetière de Montparnasse. And um, as I was walking around, I tried to think of all the reasons. And one, I mean, the main reason is, of course, if you have loved ones here buried at the cemetery, that's what you would do. You would come here and uh, pay your respects and visit them on a regular basis. If you are a visitor, as I am today, you probably are attracted by some of the big names, the celebrities buried here. So you would come here and check out, uh, you know, they have star maps. I mean, there are quite a few famous people buried here, just like at the Père Lachaise or the other cemetery called the Montmartre Cemetery. People also come here for peace, which is not obvious as I hear this truck, this van go by, but it will subside soon. They come here for peace. You come here in the summer. There are lots of trees in uh, Parisian cemeteries and you can sit on benches like I'm doing now just to relax. And people just sit here, you'll see them relaxing, walking during their lunch break with friends. And it's not creepy, it just feels comfortable because those are beautiful places. There's also people who love architecture. People who are interested in architecture come here because some of the uh, graves, as you know, in the chapels in Parisian cemeteries are quite spectacular. Montparnasse in particular has them because we have so many artists buried here. And here's the van again. So many artists buried here. And there's a reason uh, we have so many artists in this cemetery in particular. You, you just know about the heyday of this neighborhood uh, around Montparnasse, which was in the Roaring Twenties, around the famous cafes in the area. A lot of people came to uh, party, a lot of artists from around the world. But this also attracted artists because somewhat pretty wealthy families have uh, beloved ones here and they needed sculptors, they needed people to work on those spectacular graves. So this was also one of the reasons uh, we have so many artists in Montparnasse. What I've come to realize is that people come here to those cemeteries with a specific goal in mind and that's all right. And we all come to see different people, whether you were born in France, raised in France, uh, heard some names in your childhood, whether you lived abroad, uh, you will come and look for different graves, different, uh, different names. So if you'd like to join me, I'm going to take you on a short tour. Uh, there's a lot of activity this morning. I see the, the maintenance crews are here, so don't mind the noise. Hopefully the microphone will cover most of that. But uh, if you're ready, should we go? All right. So I like to start here on this uh, main artery of the cemetery, which is called l'avenue transversale because it crosses it roughly from east to west and in this section in this corner where i am now uh, there is one grave that i tend to visit which is a french actor his name was philippe noiret 
a very renowned French, French actor who passed away in 2006. And uh, Philippe was an equestrian as well, which is why you see this horse on his grave. He also loved his dogs. Um, if you saw French movies from the 70s, you probably saw Philippe Noiret. So Philippe is here. Across from him on the other side are um, a couple of French actors, actually. Um, and um, not so famous outside France. So I'm going to keep walking and I hope to share some of the, the views with you today because we have these colorful flowers, the chrysanthème <clears throat> mums, and they always tell you not to bring those as a hostess gift in France because if you do, of course there is a connection with death because of the cemeteries. You can see that there's quite a few on all the graves and look at the spectacular display right here in the middle. So we are now on Avenue Transversale. You can see the sign here. Third division, first section. It's all very organized. So when you're looking for someone, you can look up that person online and the cemetery <clears throat> will tell you where to find them. Orange is my favorite color, so of course, this display talks to me. This statue is an allegory for remembrance. It says souvenir on the pedestal. There's a big truck coming, sweeping the pavement, so I'm going to move a little bit. The Montparnasse Cemetery, like I said, has many artists. And so the graves can be quite creative. Look at this one. So this structure is called une chapelle and it typically belongs to a family. You can have several people of the same family buried in it. This is more of a caveau. We call this caveau, C-A-V-E-A-U. Caveau is a place where you can bury several members of the same family as well. And then you have la tombe, the tomb, T-O-M-B-E, which is typically for one person. Here's the culprit, he's uh, sweeping. You can see they keep the place immaculate. I'm gonna let him go. Now, interestingly, Off he goes. <laughs> In the back it says, sweeping, balayage, patience, patience. In other words, I'm slow, be patient. Now, do you see what's ahead of me here? This is the famous Tour Montparnasse, erected in the 1970s, the most famous eyesore in Paris. And look at this, with the fog, it completely disappears. Typically, it towers above the cemetery. Miracles do happen after all. Let's uh, continue along Avenue Transversale, if you don't mind. There is a pretty well-known gentleman right here in the corner. And he's been here since 2019. His name was Jacques Chirac. Jacques Chirac. He was a very popular Paris mayor. In fact, after Paris didn't have a mayor for many years, he was the first mayor to be uh, chosen in Paris in 1977, served a safe, uh, several terms, and finally uh, became a prime minister, and then all the way to the presidency. Of course, he was elected in 1995 when uh, President Mitterrand uh, passed away and completed his second term. So Jacques Chirac was elected president at that time. He served two terms, and he passed away in 2019. Now you can see, of course, the flowers, the chrysanthème, the mums. He's buried here with his daughter, his older daughter, Laurence, who passed away three years before he did. And then if you're curious about the apples, because when you come here, you'll see a lot of apples on his grave. When uh, Chirac, there's a fun story behind that, when Jacques Chirac was extremely popular, he wasn't always the best president, but he was very popular, he uh, campaigned in 1995 and uh, published a book. And on the cover of the book, 
was a picture of an apple tree. So in an interview, a journalist said, well, why, why did you pick a picture of the apple tree? And Chirac just quipped that he loved apples. He just loved apples. And at the time, there was a very famous TV show with puppets called Les Guignols de l'Info, where they mimicked French politicians. And uh, they started uh, making fun of that. And it became almost, have an apple, eat an apple, became almost the slogan of his, uh, of his presidency. You have some very old graves next to him. And I love looking at the old ones. Look at this one. You can see that this person, that's incredible, was born in 1741 and died in 1817. So those have been here for quite a while. Monsieur Chirac, President Chirac is in very good company. So like I said, the cemetery was inaugurated in 1824 and uh, it was known as the Cimetière du Sud, the South Cemetery. The Père Lachaise was known as the Cimetière du Nord, the North Cemetery. It was the first one to open in the early 1800s and it wasn't popular at first. They had to trick Parisians into choosing the Père Lachaise because nobody wanted to be buried there. It was really outside the city limits. So in all the cemeteries, you'll have very peaceful alleyways like these, typically lined with trees. And that's why they are popular in the summer, because they do provide shade. Here's another celeb celebrity here. This is the grave of uh, Serge Gainsbourg, the um, songwriter, singer, controversial figure, uh, who passed away in 1991. He wasn't very old after, let's just say, a life well lived. You might be surprised to see a lot of metro tickets on his grave. You see them? All these metro tickets. He's buried with his family, with his parents. Um, here he is, Serge. The metro tickets are in reference to one of his early songs called Le Point Sonneur des Lilas. Uh, once upon a time, there were guys in the metro who would uh, validate your tickets by just puncturing them. And that's what they did. It was a very boring job. And so the song talks about le point sonneur des lilas. It's also, of course, a play on words. He was referring to other things, which I won't go into. Des petits trous, des petits trous, encore des petits trous. That's how the song went. So glorious architecture. You have some very famous people here, of course. We have our stars, just like at the Père Lachaise. Uh, some you might recognize Bartholdi, who uh, designed the Statue of Liberty. And uh, another statue that's not too far from here, actually, on a square called D'Enfer Rochereau, a giant lion. Charles Garnier, who designed the uh, Paris Opera House in the 19th century. Lots of uh, poets, writers. Jean-Paul Sartre, Simone de Beauvoir, Samuel Beckett. Brancusi, lots of artists, really, lots of sculptors and painters, you name it. Man Ray. And because I am a cinephile, not so unusual for a French person, I do like those cemeteries because we have so many French actors uh, buried here and movie makers in particular. And so I'm going to take you into a side alleyway that is one of my favorite places to be in the cemetery. And uh, it's easy to miss because you do have those little side alleyways, but sometimes you tend to stay on the main avenues. And in this alleyway, we have a few interesting spots and people. Some of them I grew up with, not really but they were part of my childhood and my early years because they were in the movie business. So first of all, why is this place called Allée Chauveau Lagarde? You see the abbreviations? Première division, that's the abbreviation for first division. Deuxième section, second section. So when you look for a grave, it helps to have that information, which you can find online. Well, as it turns out, Chauveau Lagarde was a it says, Avocat de la Reine au procès de 1793. Avocat de la Reine. So this was the grave. This is the grave of the 
attorney of Marie Antoinette during her expedited trial in October of 1793 before she was guillotined. So this is a very old grave and it, they named the alleyway after this attorney. What an impossible job to try and defend the former queen, Marie Antoinette, after her husband was beheaded a few months earlier. I like to come here because Mireille d'Arc is here in a very elegant, very classy grave, just as she was. Beautiful actress who later became a talented photographer and movie director, Mireille d'Arc. Uh, she was everywhere in the movies in the 1970s. She was tall and thin, a beautiful lady. And they called her, she had a nickname, La Grande Sauterelle, the tall grasshopper. And you can see she died in 2017. Mireille is here. Look at bottom is here. Look at all these leaves everywhere. And there are a couple <clears throat> more graves I like to visit or more people, I would say. Because even though you did not know in person those famous people, you do feel a connection with them when you've seen their movies, read their books, and you feel like you know them. This is one of my favorite graves here. It's beautiful year round. It was designed like a garden and it was created by actress Jane Birkin for her daughter Kate, talented photographer Kate Barry, who died away tragically in 2013. And of course you have heard of Jane Birkin passing away just last year in 2023, so 10 years after her daughter. And while Jane was alive, she would come here and um, this grave was just, uh, there were blossoms, blooms here all the time. There she is. Her ashes were uh, spread out here on her daughter's grave when she passed away. I had a very interesting encounter at this very spot just a few years ago before Jane died and I wrote a story about it, which I will share in the video notes in the comment section of this video on YouTube. So make sure to check it out. There's one more person I come to see here <clears throat> because all cinephiles in France and beyond know Claude Sauté, who filmed some of our favorite, very favorite movies in the 1970s. Um, his, you know, a lot of his actors were always the same, really, but nobody really minded. Yves Montand, uh, Michel Piccoli, the beautiful Romy Schneider. And so there he lies with um, a family member. So the alleyway keeps going. We have a chapel here, more mums in the back there. And you don't know these people, but it doesn't matter because sometimes when you see a really interesting grave, it's really, I think, interesting to look up the name. Um, if it happens to be a person who's remembered in history, then you can learn something about the history of the culture you're visiting. It could be a historic event, it could be something else. I'm going to take you a little further and then I will wrap up today. I hope you're enjoying this peaceful stroll <laughs> now that we've left the trucks behind. The colors are just perfect. This is definitely fall, autumn, l'automne in French. And I think cemeteries are really special places. I don't fear them. I don't find them depressing at all. And there's a reason for that. It started in my childhood with my grandmother. And I also wrote a story about that, which I will share in the comment section. And I think a lot of people agree that uh, in Paris, the cemeteries are quite special. Here's another one that looks like a garden. And I have no idea who that person was. You see it next to the chapel? It's very pretty. And of course, les chrysanthèmes, the mums are everywhere. Now, in case you're wondering, how do you get buried in a place like this? How easy is it? 
As it turns out, it's not that hard. However, what you need is a concession, like a concession, une concession, which is a plot, a, um, a piece of land. A lot of them are taken right now. And when you buy une concession, it's not as expensive as you might think. And typically you could get it for five years, 15 years, 20 years, 50 years, or à perpétuité, which means forever. So some of these old graves, it is likely that at the time they bought them à perpétuité, forever. However, the city wants the heirs of the person who's buried here to be able financially to maintain the grave. And at some point it happens that the heirs of a person just disappear. Nobody is left to take care of the grave. What happens then? Well, at that point, the city is going to open the grave. The bones, what's left of the person, the remains, will be reduced in size, as they put it nicely. And the person will essentially go into what I would call a mass grave in the cemetery. There's a special spot for that. And then the concession will be made available. And you have to talk to the mairie, the city hall, and make a request so one of your loved ones can take over and be buried there. So this is how it's done. I'm going to walk towards the end. We've, we're reaching the, the end, see the wall in the distance of this section of the cemetery. The Montparnasse has, uh, the cemetery has two main sections split by a street, which is behind that wall. So there's a lot to see. Interestingly, there is no tribute, group tribute here to victims of uh, French victims of World War I, which is quite unusual because, as you know, after 1.6 million French men, most of them very young, died during that terrible conflict, um, monuments, tributes were erected all over France, and you find them today in every town, every city, every village, and even inside churches. But here in the Montparnasse Cemetery, there isn't really one. They do have a couple of historic markers and landmarks for victims of other wars, but not this one. Here is quite an impressive section, and you see the name in the front, Baudelaire, the French poet Baudelaire, who wrote Les Fleurs du Mal, the flowers of evil, which we had to study in high school. He was opposed to uh, Napoleon III's and Baron Haussmann's remodel of Paris in the 19th century. And they say that inspired really that famous uh, piece of work, which is called Les Fleurs du Mal. This is a cenotaph, a cenotaph, which means his body is not actually here, but this is where Baudelaire is remembered. The benches are everywhere, and that really shows you, of course, in that signature dark green color of Paris, it really shows you that there are places where people can just stroll. Les promeneurs can walk around. You can flâner, you can stroll without a necessary, without a purpose necessarily, and you can rest on a bench when you're tired. We have another famous actor here, Cinephiles will recognize his name, Bruno Kremer. He passed away in 2010. Next to him is Maître Jacques Vergès. Maybe this name sounds familiar. He was an extremely famous, controversial attorney in France. Uh, Vergès started off, uh, he fought in his early years with the Free French Forces during World War II. He was a patriot but he was also anti-colonialist, which means he defended in very controversial trials um, during the Algerian war that lasted from 1954 to 1962. Vergès defended those who had fought for the independence of Algeria, but one of his, definitely one of his most controversial trials was when he defended the uh, butcher of Lyon, AKA Klaus Barbie, the Nazi officer who committed so many atrocities in France against the French resistance in uh, Lyon and other places as well. So Vergès is here. He passed away in 2013. 
very talented lawyer, but very controversial because he took on the most challenging cases. On the right hand side here is a tribute to the police officers, la police municipale. So the local police in Paris and those who died for Paris. You can see the names, the dates are very, pretty ancient here. This was probably erected before World War I because some of them passed away before 1914. A couple of photos here. La préfecture de police aux policiers nationaux victimes victime du devoir. So it's by the préfecture they organized this. At the very top, I hope I can show this to you in this light, there is the coat of arms of Paris. You can see, maybe not with the light, uh, the coat of arms of the city of Paris, which is a ship, of course, tossed by the waves, but that doesn't sink. And that is the motto of the city of Paris, uh, Fluctuat Net Mergitur. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this stroll with me today. I love coming here. I lead tours, uh, group tours that start from this area, from Montparnasse. So I come here on a regular basis, even for just a few minutes. I tend to come to some of my fa favorite uh, sections I just showed you, but not only. There's plenty to see in the Montparnasse area. I hope you've enjoyed visiting those sections with me and I know you've been here before and you probably have your favorites as well. Everybody does. So keep visiting Paris, keep visiting our beautiful cemeteries here. They're not creepy. And there's a lot to learn here about the people who are resting very peacefully in this gorgeous place. If you would like to support France with Vero, this was a new virtual tour which will be uploaded on my YouTube channel. Uh, don't hesitate. Tips are gratefully accepted on PayPal. You can also follow me on Substack. My newsletter is free and I do publish stories on Substack I don't share anywhere else. So join me there and I will be seeing you soon. Let's flip it around so you can take one last peek at the Montparnasse Cemetery. A bientôt les amis